Good morning. It's the Monday after Easter. It is day 21 of our Stay Home, Stay Safe uh, devotional series. And today I want to start working through the, the different appearances that Jesus made to people following his resurrection and before he ascended back into heaven. Yesterday in our, in our Easter worship, we heard of the first time that Jesus appeared, and that was to the women on the way uh, to the tomb uh, on Easter Sunday morning, and that's in Matthew 28. And so today I want to focus in on, that se- on the second uh, appearance that we have, and it really is recorded in two different sections of Scripture. First of all, in John 20, verses 11 to 18, and then Mark 16, verses 9 to 11. And I'm going to share both of those readings with you today and talk about them for just a minute. And so from John 20, beginning at verse 10, it says, Then the disciples went back to their homes. This is after Peter and John had run out to the tomb, having heard the report from the women. And so it says, After they went back to their homes, but Mary stood outside the tomb crying. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? They've taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Woman, he said, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. And Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabboni, which means teacher. And Jesus said, Do not hold on to me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am returning to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. And then as we compare it with what Mark states in chapter 16, verses 9 through 11, it says, When Jesus rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him who were, with, who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that Jesus was alive and that she had seen him, they did not believe it. So as we look at these two accounts of the appearance of Jesus to Mary Magdalene, we know that, that Mary was a close follower of Jesus from the time that he had healed her from those seven demons and going forward. And she clearly is distraught as she stands outside of the tomb of her Lord. It's empty. She thinks someone has stolen the body of Jesus. Probably because that's the message that the Jewish leaders had put out. Remember that they had gone to Pilate early after Jesus had died and was buried and asked for a guard to station at the tomb to make sure that the disciples did not come and steal Jesus' body, say that he had risen from the dead, and and then confuse and cause an uproar because of it. And so Mary perhaps has heard that report already. Maybe she even heard some of those soldiers as as they ran back to report what had happened because she was on the way to the tomb. It's hard to know exactly uh, what all happened on that morning and whose paths crossed. But what is important for us to to take a look at here today is the loving care that the Lord Jesus has for one individual person. Mary is distraught. She's crying. The person that she had put her heart and soul and faith in was gone. She had watched him suffer and die. And now his body is gone. The last act of love that she thought that she would be able to do was with the other women and properly take care of Jesus' body for burial. And she had gotten herself ready to do that along with the other women. And that's why they were on their way to the tomb that day. 
And now Mary, having lost her Lord in death, now sees that the body is missing as well. And she just doesn't handle it well. Who would? We all know the feeling when grief hits home, especially when it's someone who is close to us that we love dearly, perhaps that we've spent many days with or many years with as well. And suddenly that person is no longer with us. There's an absence, there's a hole in the heart and there's pain. And oftentimes when people are grieving, that pain is something that is unique because only the person who is grieving really knows how they feel. Except for Jesus. He always knows exactly how we feel. And he knows exactly what we need. And notice how Jesus takes time on this Easter morning to comfort his friend, Mary. He comes to her there in the garden and of course she's crying and she's distraught and she at first doesn't recognize him. And we've all had that same type of situation happen for us as the last person we expect to see shows up and bumps into us at the store or something along those lines. We're so focused on something else. Our mind is working on other things. And in this case, she's grieving. And so when she looks up through her tears, she doesn't realize that it's Jesus standing there. That's the last person she expected to see because she knew that he had died and had been buried. And it's not until Jesus says her name, Mary with all the love and tenderness that he could show with one word, he shows her that he's alive and that all of her fears, all of her worries can be set aside because the Savior lives. And because he lives, that promise that all who believe in him will follow in the resurrection applies. It applied to Mary, it applied to the disciples, it applies to you and me as well. Our Lord Jesus is stronger than death. He has conquered Satan. He has crushed sin. He has stripped death of its power to hold Christians. As the Lord tells us that whoever believes will, will not die, but will live. And live with him for all eternity in heaven. And so as Jesus appears to individuals and to groups of people following his resurrection, he does it, one, to comfort them, but two, also, to open their eyes to see the truth of God's word, the power of God in action, to strengthen their faith, and not only to strengthen that faith, to make them bold in that faith, to go out and continue to proclaim the word of God to people who don't want to hear it and to people who have never heard it so that all might be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth and be brought into the family of God, the children of God for all eternity. And so on this day after Easter, as we continue to reflect upon what the resurrection means for us, as we look at what it meant for Mary, what a special day that she had. She got to talk to the risen Lord. She got to see him face to face an individual visit. Not many of his followers were able to see him one on one following his resurrection. And Mary was given this special grace to comfort her in her mourning and to strengthen her in her faith. And then notice what the Lord does. He turns her into a missionary and he sends her back to the disciples to tell them, to tell them what she had heard and what she had seen, what she had witnessed and the fact that Christ was indeed alive. And of course, the disciples and all those who are gathered with them in that room when she returns, according to Mark says, they still did not believe. Not yet. But Jesus is working on it. And for the next 40 days, Jesus is going to work to prepare their hearts to help them understand God's plan of salvation, 
and to empower them to take that salvation to the ends of the ends of the earth and then on the festival of pentecost to equip them with all the tools to do it we give thanks to our risen lord for the special care that he shows to individual souls as he works with each of us through the holy spirit and the word to call us to faith and to keep us in that faith a faith that trusts in the resurrection of christ knowing that our sins are forgiven that a place is waiting for us in heaven Knowing that helps us to take all of the things that are going on in our world around us today into perspective, proper perspective, because the most important thing is our relationship with the Lord. And no illness, no disease, no restrictions can change what we believe. And by the grace of God, the Holy Spirit will continue to work through that word to keep us strong in that faith until the day we answer the call and go home to heaven. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending Jesus to be our Savior. Through his resurrection, you have proved through your power over sin, death, and the power of the devil that we have been set free, all of our sin atoned for, and that through faith we are now children of God with full access to you through prayer at any time and at any place. O oh Lord, we thank you for sending Christ to be our substitute, to carry our pain, and to suffer in our place so that we might look forward to the eternal glory that is ours as we come robed in the righteousness of Christ through faith. O oh Lord, strengthen us in that faith today and keep us focused on what is truly important, our relationship with you and the goal of that relationship, that faith, the goal of our faith, eternal life in heaven where we will enjoy all the glories that Christ has won for us for the rest of eternity. In Jesus' name we say thank you. Amen.